right? And here are uh, their shoes. So what do you do? The idea is uh, that because you cannot compare shoe and a shoe and foot and foot, uh, right? You somehow have to indirectly compare them by uh, using your foot to sort shoes and using shoe, shoes to sort feet. So the idea is you simply take a shoe, for example, if you want to start with a shoe, you pick it at random, right? And then you try it on all of the kids. And this will allow you to split the kids into those that, shoes were, that the shoe was too small, then those that the shoe was of just right size, and then the, uh, the kids that the shoe was too big, right? So you use the shoe as the pivot to split the kids. Now what you do, you take any of the kids that uh, the shoe was fitting, right? Say this is the kid that the shoe was okay. And now you make, you try all of the shoes on that kid. So essentially, you are now using this kid as the pivot for the shoes. So this will cause all the shoes to be split, those that were too small for this kid, then the shoes, then the shoes that were exactly the same size, fitting size, and uh, all of the uh, shoes that were too big. And that would be exactly what you would have accomplished if you use this as a pivot to split the shoes. But of course, this is, you are not allowed to do that. But, right? So now you would pick an arbitrary shoe here and split all of these guys into those too small, too large, right? And the one that fits, then you take the kid that the shoe fits, and then you try all of the shoes. So the idea is always use a kid as a pivot for all the shoes, and always use a shoe as a pivot for all of the kids, but after one round of this double quick sorting, you get exactly in the same situation if you were quick sorting just the shoes, right? So you keep alternating, so it's essentially two quick sorts, quick sorting run in parallel, so it is still n log n. Huh? Okay, so this Microsoft question, um, you have two arrays of n integers, design an algorithm that finds out in n log n time if the arrays have an element in common. So uh, there are gazillions of ways uh, to do this. Uh, it's whenever you have n log n time bound, you can afford to sort them. So one way of doing it, you sort the two arrays. And then you kind of perform merge sort, except that you don't care to put elements. Uh, you simply go through the, uh, through the two arrays, always uh, write a, as if you are doing the quick sort. Say you always pick in the smaller one, and, uh, but you don't have to put it in another array. You can throw it away, and you keep doing that peeling off the last element, the smallest until either you finish both arrays or you hit the point when the two elements uh, are the same. So that's one. The other uh, would be you map all your numbers, uh, say you have x1 up to xn, and you have y1 up to yn, then you map these guys uh, into a x1 up to a comma xn, and you map all of these numbers into b, uh, yn, y1, up to b, uh, yn, or n, whatever is the size, right? And now you put them together, and you sort them according to the second coordinate. 
And then you simply go through the sorted array and you see if you can find the two equal that have different labels, right? This is simply coloring the numbers uh, so that you uh, can keep track because you see each of the um, arrays can have, uh, say, duplicates. So if you didn't use labels, you wouldn't know whether the equals uh, came from the same array or from the different, from different arrays. So many ways of doing it. Uh, okay. Um, so given an uh, array of 100 numbers that contains all numbers between 1 and 99, you have to find the, the duplicate value, right? Because if the numbers are between 1 and 99 and there are 100 of them, one number has to appear twice. Of course, um, the clever, quote unquote, clever way of doing that is simply sum up all the numbers and then subtract the sum of all numbers from 1 to 99 and it will tell you exactly which one is the duplicate. But that's kind of a, a too clever way of doing it. How would you do it in linear time if you are just a computer scientist? <laughs> if you have uh, hundreds of numbers, uh, each smaller than 99, uh, you can uh, do what? You can sort them in linear time, right? If you sort them in linear time, just using counting sort, uh, then uh, of course, uh, essentially counting sort here would be you simply start uh, uh, with an empty array and xi is mapped in the location equal to xi and then you just see whether uh, there, are, there is a slot with two numbers. Uh, Okay, so the petrol station is really a tricky one, but uh, it's really useful um, kind of to practice a bit of recursion. Well, there are two ways of uh, uh, solving it. There is one that is kind of really clever and one that is uh, that you should think of if you are a computer scientist, right? Uh, so. Here is uh, your road, and here are the petrol stations. Uh, the idea is uh, to find the appropriate starting point recursively. So if there is only one petrol station, the assumption is that some total of petrol in all stations is enough to make a round trip. If you have only one, you start from there and you won't run out of petrol. How do you find starting point uh, recursively? So assume that you know how to do it if you have n petrol stations. And now you want to find a way of doing it uh, if you have uh, n plus 1. How would you reduce? So obviously, you have to somehow reduce the number of petrol stations for one, right? How do we do that? Well, first notice, no matter how uh, petrol is distributed, there must be always one petrol station that has enough fuel to get you to the next one. Why is this so? What would happen if the amount of the, if there was no better no st station with enough fuel to get you to the next one can you then have enough fuel to make a round trip no obviously not so obviously there must be at least one petrol station that cannot be a cause of you running out of gas if you are making it up to here you see that's the point if you manage to make it up to here without running out of gas, you can then definitely make it up to here. Right? So this petrol station is not the one that you will run out of gas before reaching it, regardless of where you start from. Right? Because just the petrol at this station is enough to get you up to here. So if you made it up to that point, definitely you can Make it up to here. Well, if this is kind of a benevolent petrol station, 
It's not important. It doesn't cause any difficulties. We can throw it out. How? Well, take all the petrol from the station and pour it back here. And then remove this petrol station. Right? Because this petrol station cannot, the logic behind this, because this petrol station cannot cause trouble, it's inessential, uh, it's inessential for the final solution. So that's the one to be eliminated. Okay, now, after we do this surgery, right, we have N petrol stations, by assumption, there must be now, we don't know which one. I'm not saying you should start from here, right? By, by assumption, there must exist one petrol station that is now sufficient uh, if, you, if you start from here to make, uh, um, that you can make a complete trip. Now, my claim is that this very petrol station is a good starting point also for the case when you do have n plus one. So for the case when you didn't do the surgery, but uh, uh, this uh, petrol station, n plus first petrol station was not eliminated. Why is this so? Well, first of all, what do you think? Is it definitely true that if I start from here, I can make it uh, up to this point? Why is this true? Why do I have guarantee that if, so I am not doing the surgery, uh, that if I start from here, I can make it up to this point? Uh, why is this true? Exactly, because we know that this petrol station works in the case uh, after the surgery, right? But that nothing was changed here. So if this works for n petrol stations, I definitely can make it up to here uh, with the case n plus 1 when I didn't do the surgery, okay? So now, after I make it up to here, uh, the amount of fuel that I get here is definitely enough to get me up to this point. And I take now the gas from here. Now, if I reach here and take the gas from here, is there any difference between the situation I am in now and the situation when I actually did do the surgery? You see, if I did do the surgery, I would simply take all of the gas here, already here, right? But this is inessential. Because the amount of gas at this petrol station alone is enough to make me, uh, to allow me to get up to here, right? So the fact that after the surgery I had more petrol here is completely inessential, right? Because simply the amount of petrol here is enough to get me up to here. Once I'm here and I get this amount of gas available there, I am exactly in the same situation that I would have been if I did do the surgery. And by assumption, I can complete the, the trip. Huh? So what would happen? How would you explicitly find that petrol station? Yes? So what do you mean by surgery? OK, the surgery consists of the following. You go to a hospital, they open you up, throw out whatever they find, and then, uh, you know, stitch you together. The surgery is this. Uh, if you have N plus 1 petrol station, stations, we first find one that alone has enough petrol to make it up to here. Okay? Then we do the following surgery. We take all the petrol from here and pour it back into that station and remove this petrol station altogether. So after the... I am taking my petrol from the N plus first petrol station, yeah. pouring it back here, and removing this petrol station altogether. So now I have only N petrol stations. By assumption, there exists a correct starting point that allows me to make the whole trip. And what I showed you just now is 
why this very starting point will work even if I don't do the surgery at all. If I am back to the case with N plus 1 petrol stations, right? Why is this so? Well, from here, I can definitely make it up to here because there is no difference, right? I know that if I have only N of them, I can make the trip. Nothing changed here, so I'm definitely able to come up to this point. Once I get to that point, regardless of what is in my tank, if there is anything left, right? Once I get to that point, the gas available, the petrol available here is enough to make me, uh, to, to allow me to get to this point. And once I am here and take the petrol from this uh, station, I am exactly with the same amount of gas in my tank that I would have been if I did do the surgery. The only difference is that if I did do the surgery, the gas from here, I will have it in my tank already here. But this makes no difference to whether I can complete the trip or not. Why? Because just the petrol from here is enough to make me, to allow me to come to here. And so I'll get this amount of petrol just with a slight delay. Right? But after I get here and I take the petrol, uh, now I am in exactly the same situation that I would have been uh, in the case when I did do the surgery, right? Just the surgery allowed me to get this petrol earlier, but I don't have to use it, right? The, so the surgery allows you to get this petrol earlier, but that's inessential because just the petrol at this very point is enough to make me up, uh, uh, to cross up to here. How would you explicitly find the starting point? So you look for the petrol station that has enough fuel to get to the next one. You do the surgery, you take the petrol, pour it here, remove this one. And you keep doing that. Now, I don't know which one will be uh, next to be removed, but uh, because I don't know after removing this petrol putting it here, whether this amount altogether is enough, maybe it's not enough to get me to this point. So maybe this one will not be uh, removed. But definitely, for the same reason, by the same reasoning as before, I can definitely pick one of the stations that has enough fuel to get me to the next one. And then this is the place where I'll do next surgery. So after each round, I look for a petrol station that now has enough petrol to get me to the next one, remove that next one, pouring the petrol back, and keep doing that until you are left with only one station, and that's your starting point. Okay? There is another way of doing this. Assume that uh, your car is magical <laughs> and can run on negative amount of petrol. So even though you're, and you start from any point and you plot the amount of gas, but, oh, sorry, petrol, in America they call petrol gas, so, uh, and I wasted 17 years there, so, okay. Uh, so the idea is you can start from any point and say this is my point one, two, three, four, and so forth, and I plot them here. And then I plot the amount of gas, of petrol, in my tank. Uh, so here, when I take the, uh, at this point, uh, the amount will jump uh, to whatever quantity is here. And maybe along the way, uh, it will become negative. But then I take the gas here. Maybe it becomes positive again. Maybe it will dip again. And then uh, here, it will jump. Uh, but maybe it will stay negative, uh, go down, and so forth, right? Now tell me, if I change the starting point, how will the graph change? Exactly, so only one section might be shifted and the whole graph can be pushed up or down, but the basic decay, because the decay is defined only by the distance, right? It's linear 
decay. So if you keep changing the petrol stations, only the graph keeps moving up and down. Okay, so what do you think? What is the petrol station at which I should start my trip? The one after the minimum. It's uh, exactly if you start with the actually if you start with the minimal, so find the lowest point. Maybe the lowest point is somewhere here. And so just before you enter this petrol station, because here it will jump again. So if you start from here. Right? That's the very minimal point. Okay? That's the very minimal point. If you do the round trip, what will be the amount of petrol uh, just before reaching that point? Can it be negative? No, because the amount total now when just before reaching this station, you took the petrol from all stations. Right? Just before, because you took the petrol from all stations, you know that the, 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 just before that, uh, the, the amount must be positive or at worst zero. But that's, this means that nowhere else you can go below zero, because that's the minimal point. Right? So if you start from a point, uh, just before which you get the local minimum of these graphs, uh, then uh, you can complete the, the trip. But that's obviously it's kind of uh, only existence proof. And uh, while the one that we described actually tells you how to explicitly find uh, the starting point uh, uh, in a, by a procedure. Okie dokie. So that's. Uh, when it comes to comparison of the growth rates, uh, the only interesting case is this n to, um, what was it, 1 plus uh, sine uh, n phi divided by 2, uh, and then the whole thing divided by 2, and square root n. What you should notice that this actually has only four distinct values. Uh, and the values are zero, uh, so uh, they are zero, and then uh, what are the values? Uh, when this is two, so it will be one and one half, right? Because this guy can be either zero, plus one, or minus one. So this oscillates between these three values. Well, n to the zero, Right? n to the 0 is just 1. So at this point, uh, your function will be just 1. On other points, uh, it will be, so on these points, it will be uh, n. Right? So on these points, it will be n. And on the middle points between, it will be just the square root, so it will look something like that. So notice, in, some, in one subset that is infinite, this function is much smaller than the square root, because the square root keeps growing, and this is just, uh, n to the 0 is just 1, right? So on some points, uh, this is smaller than square root, but on other points, when this is equal to 1, this is much bigger than the square root. So this, the, uh, the message here is that this asymptotic notation does not introduce a linear ordering. It's only a partial ordering because there are functions f and g, like uh, this and square root n, so that it is neither f all of g nor g all of n. They keep kind of exchanging the roles, so uh, you do not uh, have a, a linear order. Okay, then uh, there were these problems uh, to find two numbers uh, that um, 
how was it? Uh, an array better, you can find two numbers that sum up to x, right? And you have to do it n log n, um, worst case, that's one algorithm, and another algorithm expected time to be linear. Okay, so if you have to do it in n log n, it's enough time to sort the array. Yeah? Then you can go through the array, you subtract from x your number, and you have to find out whether the array, whether the difference is present in the array. How do you do that efficiently? If the array is sorted, you can do binary search. So for each element, it takes only log many uh, steps, so altogether n log n. Now, can I sort it using quick sort? No, because quick sort of worst case scenario runs quadratic. So the, you would use merge sort because it's guaranteed to run in time um, and log n. Okay, so how would you do it in expected linear time? Well, one way is just to use hashing, right? Because if you are lucky with hashing, if the hash table is balanced, you will have very few entries, a constant number of entries per slot. So your algorithm's expected time will be uh, linear because uh, to check whether your number is in the hash table, it will take constant time, a single step to look up. And then if you find in that slot several items, you just have to compare with these items. Okay, so this is kind of preparation for what we are doing next and let's make five minute break and then we will move to greedy algorithms. <laughs>